Hello and welcome to Unnati. I'm Dest. I'm Shivangi. And today we have a pivotal figure from Unnati Skill Center's Finance Department, Mr. Ramani sir. I welcome you sir, and I request you to introduce yourself to our viewers. Hi, I'm Ramani. I'm a chartered accountant by profession. I qualified in 1984, sorry, 1980, and spent a good uh, 30 odd years in the corporate sector, working with various companies in India and abroad. I have held various positions, right from accounts to treasury head to finance head to operations head to commercial head. Come with a wide range of experience between manufacturing, trading, operations, cross-country businesses, etc. Out of my own volition, I decided to quit corporate and uh, do something in the social sector. And 2008, I moved out to the corporate. And since 2010, I am with Unity, good 14 years now. That's a little bit about me. Thank you, sir, for introducing yourself to our viewers. So, so I have a few questions for you. Should you begin? Okay, we can. So I heard that you have spent a lot of time with social causes. So could you tell us how and when this interest started? Uh, it's not right to say I spent a lot of time in social causes. If I look around Unity and uh, other social organizations, there are many who have spent more than three decades and four decades, starting from our friend Swami Narayanan, Ranga, Irja. Probably I'm one of the youngest as well as the number of years in social sector is concerned. But to answer your question about how the interest started, yeah. right from childhood I've been interested in doing something for the welfare of somebody else. But coming from a middle class family, I didn't have the wherewithal probably to jump into it at a young age. I wanted to secure my life and make sure that I can successfully do something in the social sector. So I had to turn to a proper education and then get into a job. At some time when I felt that my back is properly covered, I felt the right time to cut off mm. and then move into the social sector. So working for the benefit of somebody else has always been one of my passion, my life mission. So I mean any area, right? But it so happened that when I decided to quit the career in 2008 and come to India, I was abroad at that time, I searched around to find good organizations couple of organizations I went and experimented for a few months but somehow or other their value system or something in their hierarchy or something didn't agree with my set of values. It so happened that Unadi always conducts a lot of concerts and cultural programs and I am a fan of Carnatic music and art and culture. So somebody told me yes there is a program here so I came here. I heard Ramesh Swami talk on the stage looking for volunteers. He doesn't know me. So one Sunday morning the concert was happening, I think this is in early 2010, maybe February 2010. Those days we had Sunday morning concerts. So I went and met him and said, this is who I am. I've just come back to the Middle East a couple of months ago. I'm a child accountant. I can do something for you. I don't know Canada, so I can't be in the training area. But is there anything in the back office I can help you? So he said, yeah, you're most welcome. So I said, when can I come? He said, come tomorrow morning. That was a surprise. I thought he will think about it. Maybe say consult to my team and then come back to you. It didn't take even two seconds. He said, come tomorrow morning, nine o'clock. Nine o'clock, I'm here. He takes me to the basement of the building, same building. And there is one lady sitting there, Janet. She's still here with us. He said, Janet, this is Ramani. He is going to assist in managing our finance and accounts from today. Please work with. And he is gone. I don't see Navesh at all afterwards. This was a big thing for me. Any organization where a stranger can walk into the finance section and be given free reins to do whatever he wants. That speaks volumes about the transparency of the organization. I still can't believe that there is such organizations exist, right, like us. So this was a clear proof for me that this organization I want to work with, right? And from there, last 14 years has been an unimaginable journey. That's very nice, sir. Yeah. Can I answer your question? Yes, sir. Uh, so, sir, you have been in the forefront of uh, Unity's uh, main crucial uh, thing, like uh, it, which is its finance. So, can you share us some journey of this function of this? Oh, definitely. But I need to correct you. Finance is crucial, but that is not the most crucial. Sorry, right? Sir. It is an enabling service. Right. 
the business is what is most crucial in any organization be it commercial or it is social sector organization what is the mission of the organization the most crucial if that is not there we don't we are not required finance is not required so finance wherever you go finance accounts are all support services yes it is crucial but not the most crucial right and we are there to help and assist the front line to deliver right that is our role right so if i go back to 2010 we were a very small organization i remember we were just about 14 employees at that time right and we just had this center right so i thought with my experience maybe i need to come one day a month two days a month and that is how it started right but along the line the team that is managing the growth the strategy the business as i call it dreamed very big and they said we need to scale up the organization and very soon in 2012 i found myself doing spreadsheets which i thought i'll never do after the corporate sector right making a five year forecast and a 10 year forecast right and i found that instead of two days in a month it went to 15 days a month 20 days a month 30 days a month and the timeline also moved from 8 hours to 24 by 7 thinking of what next right so this has been the journey right and from a one man team of janet with me as assisting her probably i'm proud to say we are a team of eight people today right so that shows the growth of organization right so the journey has been fantastic the growth has been phenomenal right phenomenal in the sense it is absurdly phenomenal over the last few years right even we could not have imagined where we are today 5 years ago right so the challenges of making sure that the finance and other functions are running up to speed to what the front line is doing has been a challenge always and also reading as to what will be required in the years to come tomorrow day after tomorrow next year what is the plan how should we equip ourselves to manage the demand on us has been a challenge always but it has been a very nice challenge and i think i'm happy to say that by and large we have risen to the occasion we have never failed the requirements of the front line that's really great sir uh, so looking ahead we have also have uh, heard that uh, you introduced a technological invention in unnati so how you see unnati in the next 5 uh, years in technological terms yeah it's very funny that uh, i'm a chartered accountant i'm not a tech person right I I'm not learned to learn technology. I quit science in my 12th and then moved into hardcore numbers, right? But some or other during my life I always been fascinated by technology in my area, right? Wherever finance and other things are involved, I love technology. I keep reading about it. I try to understand how it can enable businesses. Areas where probably it is not directly connected to finance. Also, if it is of interest to the common man, is something I can learn. I always read. I read technology articles, startup businesses. I feel that technology is a huge enabler for any business. Also, technology itself is a business, but such businesses can help organizations do better. Right? The power of data is what is relevant today. Right? Business is one. Data is power. and when you want to aggregate data you need technology to help aggregate data that is one aspect of technology second aspect is with technology you can keep your running cost down in terms of the manpower required to do certain functions right if you have a proper technology instead of having 10 accountants it can be done with two accountants instead of having 10 process executives you can manage with two process executives so in any aspect of business there will be some element of technology that can come and help you understand that domain better also efficiently run that department so this i have believe and i have always done this wherever i have worked i have brought in technology i never shied away from change there are people who feel that okay we are doing well why should we change but change is something not shakeable change happens whether you like it or not change happens why to get happened computers came in today more uh, technology is coming in so there is no running away from technology you need to embrace technology as it comes the key is to understand what will work for you what is required for you right you don't need to be a technology person to know that so long as you know your needs and you know where to look for it talk to people understand the elements and say how to bring it in within a reasonable cost you look look at the cost benefit analysis right so that way i think in unnati 
Um, I can probably say that we are one of the few NGOs probably who has embraced technology in a very big way over the years, right? We have moved away from Excel sheets and admissions, right? We have a training software which we started a long time ago, which was one of the most important things we found will be required when we scale up. A single center you can manage very easily, but when you have an ambition to do 30 centers, 40 centers across India, the key data that we get is our beneficiaries, right? So how to capture the information of the beneficiaries from remote locations? So you need a technology platform. So we have all in the Tunadi, I have looked at technology, what is relevant and most required today. Maybe there are technologies which you can bring in, but not very relevant today. Maybe not cost effective. So we always looked at what is important for us today, what will be important for us day after tomorrow, and whether it is cost effective, and how does it help us. So if these things are plotted and tick marked, then the technology comes in, right? Another challenge is most of the technology is aimed towards commercial organizations. They don't understand NGO business. Yeah, yeah. So you need to sit them down, tell them, look, this is how the use case is. You have a similar use case there, but you use a different terminology. I use a different terminology. My beneficiaries are my customers, right? You call customers. For me, my beneficiaries are my customers. You must understand it like that. So when you explain the requirement, the use case to them in a language that we understand, which they also now understand, then they are able to turn around the technology in a way that it suits us. Right. So that is an art. You need to make sure that they understand your need properly. Right. Yes, sir. So, sir, uh, where do you see Unnati in the upcoming uh, five years in terms of technology? Oh, that's a tough question to answer. Technology is something which is evolving very fast, right? Yeah. And the horizon changes every six months. Earlier on, probably five years, three years, two years. Today, every month there is a new technology, yeah. right? So, to get into the future and say in five years what technology will we will be using is a difficult question to answer right if you had asked the same question two years ago i could not have told you what we are doing today right ai is going to be a big disruptor in yes. the technology world right so we don't know what AI is going to do to various platforms that we use today right even there could be newer technologies that will come in which will touch parts of unity which are not touched today Right? So the idea is to keep your ears close to the ground, keep watching what is happening, keep reading what is happening, which is relevant to the vocational training, learning and development area also, and other domains, right? And identify what are the changes happening. You need to be close to the changes in technology. You will identify what is good for us, right? And that will definitely be done. So to take a shot at what will happen five years from today, I can definitely say, if there is anything new that is available in the market which will help Unnadi do it functions better, 100% it will be there Unnadi. As we speak, we are talking about looking at the size of where we are today and size of what we are going to do next to two to three years. We have a lot of legacy systems, right? They are all sitting separately. The admission software is sitting separately. Donor management sitting separately. Finance is there. Udyogam career portal is there. The activity management portal is there, right? There is a lot of data. And we are all pulling reports from various systems and trying to match with each other and trying to create a report. Currently, we are discussing with a team of uh, tech volunteers to build a central platform which will talk to all these separate platforms, bring the data from there and do the data mining to create reports and dashboards which will be useful to the board level, to the executive level, to the functional level, to our funder level. Whereby each unit need not call the other person or wait for them to give them the relevant data. Everything is available real time on a particular dashboard, each according to their requirement. Even external sources like even my vendors will be able to log into my system, submit their invoices, see the status of the approval, see the payment details. The funder should be able to log into the system and see where their project is today in terms of numbers, in terms of utilization, in terms of certificates every information which we share through emails and uh, Google storage, etc. So that is what we are planning. Hopefully not five years. I'm saying in the next year and a half or so, maximum two years, we should see this coming to fruition. Right? I don't want to dare dream beyond that. That's Thank really you. great, sir. Thank you, sir, for giving your valuable time to us and sharing your expertise. Uh, and thank you, viewers, for tuning into Nathis podcast. Stay tuned for future episodes. Until next, take care and keep striving for positive changes.